Kosher, <clears throat> author and chief editor of uh, Corona Samizdat Press. Uh, the latest book uh, that came out, well, actually two books came out. One was um, uh, this in here, and I did a review already, and uh, so uh, that leaves me with one left that is unreviewed. And uh, I'm not reading anything else uh, right now, or at least I'm not close to being finished. So that, that leaves uh, this one, Wandering Stone, The Streets of Old Isla. And the difficult part about it for me is that I wrote the book. Um, so I have to talk about a book that I wrote. Now, the um, thing is I wrote the book many years ago, five, uh, six, four uh, but it, it was published three and a half years ago, a little more than that, in Slovene uh, and in English. But it was published by a place in Isola, and they specialize in um, newspapers, and uh, occasionally they'll print a book of local interest, which this was. But they're not a publisher, so as soon as this sold out, it was out. And... Uh, I decided, you know, I need to get more because uh, it, there is no other book. Isla is a bit of a tourist town because it's on the Adriatic. And this is uh, 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 the only book about Isla and only Isla in English, the only actual book. Uh, the, the conceit of the book, I'll just read the back to you. Uh, Wandering Stone is a writer's rambling, ramblings guided by his intent to write something about every street in the former island portion of Isla. Compared to one Slovene reader to Joseph Brodsky's Watermark, true story, that's how I heard of Joseph Brodsky's Watermark. I read it and I thought, well, okay, they're both about Venetian towns, one being Ven Venice itself, and then this one. Uh, compared uh, to Watermark, Harsh's book is a traveler's macaronicon with photos, which, like much of the prose, are meant to inspire independent thoughts beyond the apparent. Along the way, remarkable yet little-known figures emerge, such as Alma Vivoda, what a heroine, along with surprising connections between Isla and historical figures such as Casanova. Yeah, he's got a place in here. He's got a story connected to Isla. It's very interesting. Antonio Smarelia may or may not be largely forgotten. Composer. Uh, Nozze di Istria. Very uh, amazing uh, orchestral piece. So he may or may not uh, be largely forgotten, but we learn here of his friendship with James Joyce, and on the way we are introduced to the remarkable street that bears his name. Smarelia Street is a really... Uh, nice street in Isla. So, what is in the book? Uh, well, you know, there's the occasional uh, 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 philosophical passage that ends with something like uh, um, this on the first page. Um, uh, mm, 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 where do I start? Oh, perhaps one should limit one's time looking to the sky and meditating on existence. The principle I shall call the banality of the mental maelstrom. So, you know, let's not get too philosophical in this book. But we also want to, you know, as much as we can, locate the town in, um, in space. And this picture, the first one in the book, does a good job of that. Um, you can see the Alps in the background, and you get the small lonely boat. Um, the classic picture from here is a more, um, you might have a bit of Trieste and, you know, the mountains, but this is, this captures it better, a sort of a lonesome, lonesome nature to the town. There's a map of the town, and I know, I know, I know, I know, we do not want one split by the gutter, but the book is just too small. Um, if we put a full map of the city on one page, it would have been too small. There are numbers on this map um, that mark a few places I like, like the uh, um, 
uh, well, right, right there is the dog beach. It's a tiny spot on the coast where you can take your dog without anybody giving you a fine. You can swim with your dog. I have a dog, and I like it. This is a, a, a good idea of what the book looks like. Um, here you have um, the uh, artist um, Francisco Tomsic, uh, who designed the book, um, paid great attention to font and uh, found some old German fonts that he used, and they don't have the sh, ch, and so on, so he had to put those in by hand. But it's a really great-looking book. Now, the first problem, though, is um, the, the, the letters are a little bit small. It might look hard to read, but I found out that it actually is not. You, you just read by natural daylight, and it's easy. It looks great, and it's easy. And the same for the photos. These are these photos um, are not meant to be looked at with unnatural light. Um, there's there may be a princ principle involved, you know, photos with natural light, whatever. But the um, what I found sitting out on the balcony just before I came out here, trying to figure out what I would talk about, um, was that uh, these these actually um, look terrific by uh, natural light. They were taken by a German woman named Henrike van Devitz. Um, her information can be found on the internet. Uh, there are 275 photos in here, which seems like a lot. But then again, look, there's five right there. Um, and uh, they cohere. And um, they often refer to something specific in the text. Often they don't. But you sure get a lot of pictures of a small town. Uh, about 4,000 some people live on the island. Um, there's um, a lot of talk about architecture here. Um, <clears throat> I have a bit of a problem with uh, Ruskin as a human being. He was a bit of a pig. But um, I've learned a lot about architecture from him. And I use a little bit of it here. Um, it's a poor town. And so, for instance, um, this kind of uh, um, front is not very common. What's most common is just this lintel um, structure for a door frame. You don't have a lot of arches. Go to Trieste, lots of arch arches. Go to Capodistria or Coper, a lot of arches. We don't have a lot of arches here. But we got a lot of this accidental... Um, uh, beauty of the Mediterranean uh, ville. Um, there's this, it's divided into streets, so you got uh, Giordano Bruno Street, and on Giordano Bruno Street, you have the, um, the fun, you know, see, the, 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 Bruno, no, no respect, you know. Um, he, they give him a, a, a street that starts at a, an old flagellant church and goes a very short way up to the main church in town with the, uh, you can see it here on Garibaldi Street. They, they fucked him the same way. Um, this is the uh, campanile of the main church, Sveti Maurizio. And, and it, it's modeled after the uh, San Marco uh, company lay in Venezia, a bit smaller, a bit shorter, um, and also a church. I don't know anything about this church, I've, or else I've forgotten if I did once know. We also have uh, um, uh, stories of partisans, um, streets named after partisans, but there's there are two um, great musicians. <clears throat> Smarelia was one. And the other was Tartini. His street, well, it's hard to tell without color. Um, but his street is often considered the most beautiful because it's, it's, uh, it slopes and it's got uh, um, nice architecture and a lot of flowers. And so it's a nice street. And that's a shot of Tartini. Um, uh, uh, with the devil playing the guitar for him. He's famous for the Devil's Trill Sonata, 
There's a little bit about him in here. Now, um, I would like to uh, tell you the story about Casanova and his connection, but I think that should be something that you should look up on your own, or you should buy the book and find out, or write me personally and say, I don't want to buy the book, but I do want to know about Casanova's connection to Isla, and I'll tell you. And uh, um, that's, that's, I think, probably all that needs to be said there. I'm going to read one whole chapter to you, because it's close to my heart. Um, it's called O Trinkova. It's the only poem in here, and it's on page 110. In Slovene books, they put the uh, um, table of contents in the back and call it an index. If they have an index, I don't know what they do. Maybe they call it a table of contents and put it in the front. I, I have no idea. The colophon is also in back. Now, let's go back to O Trinkova, because, like I said, it's close to my heart. And, uh, ah, here it is. There's, there's the uh, first page of it. Poet voice. O Trinkova. In English, we would call you Ivan Trinko Street. But you deserve better. We don't want people asking us who you were, Mr. Trinko. For even though you were a Roman Catholic priest, a poet, a writer, a philosopher, a translator, a linguist, a critic, a composer, not to mention a painter. When I asked a poet about you, she said, it doesn't matter. Maybe you did too much. And I loved you because where a triangle of freedom opened up on Gregorcheva, that's a street, where you were interesting, going two directions at once, perhaps a poet flank past that little round sign, and a philosopher flank to the left that takes us down close to the sea, where you had your opportunity, they put a garbage kennel. You deserve better. Down you go. Go, Ivan, go. Unless you need to stop first to dump your garbage. Or hop on your motorcycle and come back up. As you know, translators go both ways. And critics sometimes have to escape in haste. You might need to zip up to the church that is so near, just one short street behind the cameraman. You never were a cameraman, yet still, Ivan, you deserve better. I made the picture small as if I were your grandchild your opportunity to make your mark as a street, as a street poet in Isla, is evident in the photo to my right. A surprise move, a different trinco, classic, decadent, historic, jaded, exuding all the charm inherent in an old Venetian city. Look how the building itself stumbles into your lane. But it is... But is there, is there, an uglier building in the old town than that dreck brown stump before you? No, wait! Have you tricked me, philosopher poet? Or are you a swine who would have a segment of Gramsci Street to make up for what is lacking in your own? No, Ivan, you have no side street. You merely descend belatedly and rapidly, gracelessly. You would have us pick up speed only to zig, to zag, pick up more speed, and then run smack into a wall. We deserve better. Trinkova, one of my favorites. Some, uh, some of the uh, bear photography, bear of buildings, I mean. Um, and, and that's important, you know, because you, we are talking about an Adriatic island. And even though um, the most remarkable thing I first think of here is the architecture and the uh, little, little bits of Venice scattered about, or we are a scattered about little bit of Venice, perhaps. Um, 
there is also um, weather. There's swimming. There's a, a great variety of trees. There are new buildings that are ugly. There are old buildings that are classics. There is a, look at this, I love, love, love this page. Look at that. Buildings tumbling every which way. It's a sort of um, cubist, natural uh, cubism of our architecture. But then <clears throat> they, you know, uh, uh, more modern buildings lose their, their uh, architectural tenacity. And they just say, all right, we put up a big wall here. Maybe we'll put one window in. I would like to sort of accidentally come across a um, page that uh, ah, I did. Okay. I think it's, it's on Verdi Street. Giuseppe Verdi, a third musical presence. This is um, interesting. Um, these, are, these are the uh, classic, um, I don't know, is it Indo-Saracenic? I can't remember the term now. Uh, windows. And this one is not, this is cemented over. I heard because um, people were, were taxed according to the number of windows they had, which would indicate how many rooms they had. So if you didn't have, if this is not a window, which it is not by any means, it's just a, uh, an indentation in the wall in a fancy shape, that is a window. Uh, these people would be taxed more. I don't know if that's true. A lot of the stuff in here is um, speculation, and uh, a lot of it is history. Casanova. Um, I've just run upon him now. I could, I could actually just read this whole passage to you, but I don't think I, I will. Um, <clears throat> a barber from Isola shared a jail cell with Casanova when Casanova made his famous escape from the Ducal Palace. And the story is murky, but it involves espionage on the part of the barber. And it involves Casanova's prison shave. He had been in prison for over 400 days. And so he had a great deal of hair on his head and facial hair. And he needed a trim. Because if you know Venice, the Ducal Palace um, is uh, on water. And you can't really get to land very easily um, from, from there. Um, you have to go through a lot of bridges and pass, you know, through most of the the famous part of Venice, uh, not the outlying islands. Although it's, it is a bunch of islands, but it almost seems like land there. You you just cross you cross the Rialto, you you cross the Grand Canal, but otherwise you have to cross a bunch of other ones because it is still a bunch of islands. Well, so he had to walk a long ways, and there's no way he was going to do that at night, especially because he finally got out in the morning. Um, the way he got out was pretty interesting, but the first thing he had to do, he and the friar he escaped with, they had to get cuts, and, uh, they forced the barber of Isola, a guy named, uh, uh, Francesco Soradacci, to give them the haircuts. They probably then knocked him out. Um, we have, uh, two versions. Um, we have Casanova's, and we have our logical version from files. We know that it's true. We know that Casanova's story in, uh, includes a real person from Isla. Historians have checked. Francesco Sordaci was from Isla, was a spy for Venice, but we don't know what actually happened in the cell. I think uh, Casanova probably just brutalized him, forced him to give the haircut, knocked him out because you couldn't trust him not to yell. And they went up, up on the roof, and um, they, I think Casanova was going to jump into the, the canal by the Bridge of Sighs, but um, some problems occurred. Their ladder got all messed up, and they ended up just uh, lowering themselves back into the Ducal Palace in a different place where they could walk down the stairs. And that's what they did. They waited for an opportune time, and they simply walked out. And then they fled 
the town and many fascinating adventures occurred. But we don't know what happened to Soradachi. And this book won't tell you because I don't know either. But I will tell you what Soradachi was up to and uh, why, why he was um, not a popular figure in Isla, a spy. But what was he after? Read the book. All right.